Hello, Ready? everyone, and welcome to an episode of Dating in the Wild. I'm so excited. This is my first episode featuring an actual couple, and it's my friends, Matt and Bree. Hello. Hey, hey, great to be with you. Yay. Okay, so they have a wonderful love story to share. And so, Matt and Bree, tell the audience a little about yourselves. Um, yeah, my name is Matt. I'm 45 years old. I was how old when we started? I was 33. 33. I was 33 when we met. Um, I am a confirmed um, egomaniac. Uh, yeah, maybe not so much anymore. <laughs> no, uh, that back to the story. You'll find it more out more about that um, when we start talking about it. But um, I'm very much an extrovert. Um, I love people. Love being around people. I'm a communicator um, by profession. And um, yeah, I, I, I love my life. I love living where we live and our, having our kids and everything's great, but it was definitely an effort getting here too. So it'll be a good story. Yeah, I'm Bree. Um, I'm the complete opposite of Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an introvert. Uh, I like people. I just like them uh, once in a while. I have my small group of friends where he will talk to anybody and everybody <laughs> at any time. True. Um, I'm 39 years old. Uh, right now I'm a stay-at-home mom, which wasn't planned at all, uh, but in a <laughs> pandemic and yeah, it just kind of happened that way and uh, it's, it's worked out really well. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Oh, so then how did you guys meet? Because as everyone knows, Dating in the Wild, usually my stories are to highlight um, people who have met without the use of dating apps. And so dating apps were around when you guys first met, right? But that's not well, how you guys met. Uh, that's not how we met, but I had used a couple of the dating sites before I met Matt. So they were around, mm -hmm. um, but it was successful. Yeah, I had never been on a dating site before and I was a confirmed bachelor. I enjoyed um the single life and was someone who likes going out and meeting people and doing a lot of different kinds of things just whichever way the wind blows that's kind of where I would go to meet people and actually you know if there was an attraction with a woman we would date um sometimes it lasted a little while sometimes it didn't mm -hmm. um but you know for the most part it was it was a positive experience um yeah so then how yeah. did you guys meet how did we meet Right. Okay. So, so I uh, used to work for a little nonprofit um, that helped homeless people to find housing. And um, I was the liaison between this nonprofit and a program that we had, which is called Feed My People, which is where you go downtown and um, you feed the homeless or you assist with feeding a homeless breakfast. And it's at 530 in the morning. So I was assigned to be at the homeless breakfast at 5.30 in the morning. And my coworkers joked around that Matt Mitchell works there or he volunteers there. And I'm like, I don't know who Matt Mitchell is. <laughs> um, and well, apparently this guy, he worked, he was on TV. He was yeah. a sports anchor on TV. That's right. And um, they were all excited about me meeting him. And I just kind of shrugged my shoulders and thought, okay, well, I'm here to work. So that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I had been at the breakfast for three years before Brie walked through the doors. And I will never forget the first time I saw her. She came through the side door and somebody's like, oh, yeah, the foundation's got a new liaison starting today. I was like, okay, yeah, great. And she walked in and she was wearing blue jeans and this red pullover zip up sweater. And she had her notebook like in her arms and she was just walking very confidently and she had the, the best smile on. I mean, it just, it knocked me out, man. I, I looked, I looked up and I saw her and I thought that is going to be trouble. And eventually it'd be, but not right off the bat. Meanwhile, Bree looked at me and thought, hmm, Matt Mitchell. He's not all that. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first of many ego checks. Thanks to Bree. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so we got to know each other at the breakfast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and we haven't really flirted did we I think we were pretty reserved um, you know you, you don't want to there was always kind of the hesitancy with me that you don't want to date work necessarily because if yeah. things go bad you know, 
you both lose something that's important yeah. to you. And this was Bree's job. Uh. I was volunteering, but I worked downstairs um, and kind of ran security. And she also worked downstairs and, and helped with clients. And every day I would get to see she um, work with people and how kind she was and how she handled adversity or confrontation and just how effortless she made it seem. Mm-hmm. And I just, the more I was around her, the more impressed I was by her. Yeah. Uh, just the way she moved. And it yeah. was uh, very compelling, but I didn't want it. Again, I was very hesitant to make any kind of a move. He also was trying to date a lot of the other girls that were volunteers there. Well, now you just made it seem like I was like, oh, I don't want to date her because we both worked, <laughs> but somehow I'm playing the field with the rest of the volunteer organization. <laughs> there were a couple girls. They're that... going to think I'm a total cad. Well, you're not. <laughs> not now. now. <laughs> um, not anymore. And, and, not anymore. Not anymore. I had my moments. And I was dating outside of that, but I always thought, you know, there's always Matt, mm-hmm. knowing that I could date him, but he was never. Yeah, and I was always guy. like, well, there's always Bree. I've got a good feeling about her, but I, I'm just going to keep her in my back pocket. Yeah. And sure enough, for like for like nine months, we just kind of had a relationship twice a, twice a week. Yeah, um, very cordial, you know, professional. Very right. Yeah. Nice. So I don't know what got in me, but I thought, I I think I kind of like this guy. I guess we started talking more <clears throat> and then we started flirting and then he'd walk me to my car and then he'd give me a hug. And one time he copped a fill. <laughs> I got up on the counter next to her and I just let my hand trail down her back to her lower back. And granted, I had taken liberties and I should not have done that. I, I definitely caught her by surprise, but I think that might've been the first time you knew that I was interested in you yeah. in a yeah. romance. So he'd always walk me to my car and give me hugs. And I thought, well, the next time he does that, I'm going to lean in and see if he kisses me. And sure enough, he walked me to my car. I leaned in. I got really close. I mean, like like this close. And he turned away. And I I said, okay, bye. Yeah. Yeah. And I left. Yep. And I just thought, well, I guess he's not into me. And I remember driving away because I texted you almost immediately after I got in the car. And I said, I said something along like, trust me, it's going to happen. I just want this to be the, I just want it to be absolute. I want to be for it. Yeah. Um, oh. And I had a very strong inclination. I have a very strong inclination. And this is, you know, it's God's truth. I thought this is going to be my last first kiss. I really thought that would be my last first kiss. And for a guy like me, who was very much a, had no interest in getting married, had no interest in having children, no interest, and neither did either one of us. We were on that path together, but it was a major revelation to me. I was like, I think, I think when this happens, it's going to be forever. I knew it then. I knew it then. Now I tried to screw it up a whole lot in the meantime, but yeah, it was, I was right in the end. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So then who asked who out after this like nine months of um, cordial? So the next time we saw each other again, we did kiss. Yeah, and it was epic. And it was it was pretty great. And then I guess that weekend he invited me to go to his best friend's engagement party. Engagement party. That was our first date. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was great. It was. I mean, I didn't anybody friend. He, he mingled some, but I guess you didn't know a lot of people there. Either. I didn't know. I didn't know all of them. And of course, you know, the bride and groom to be were all, you know, everybody wanted to them. Um, so, yeah. you know, yeah, it was pretty much just you and me. And so we just, we hung out. We had a great time. It, it, it was, it worked out really well. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's, and then, that's a lot of pressure for a first date as well. It is, but I, I guess I just never took it seriously. <clears throat> I mean, I took him dating, being with him seriously, but as far as dating, I had just wound myself up too many times mm-hmm. and realized that it's just, there's, it's not worth it. If it doesn't mm-hmm. work out, it's okay. Yeah. I was to the age that I'm not going to waste my time, somebody who doesn't respect me or in a situation that I'm not comfortable in. Yeah. And I just kind of let it go from there. Yeah, she was so relaxed. That's a great mindset. Yeah. 
Thank you. It took a long time and hard work to get there. She was the first first woman I'd ever dated who had mindset. I remember telling a friend of mine very soon after we started dating, I was like, there's nothing about her that needs fixing. She's not looking to be rescued. You know, she chooses to spend her time with me, not because she needs, this is not a transactional mm -hmm. kind of relationship. And mm -hmm. that's the first, I'm I'm what embarrassed to say, that's the first kind of, of that relationship I can remember being in. Yeah. And maybe that's why it was so meaningful from the jump. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So then how long did you guys date until things progressed to be very serious and I mean, obviously, um, we know now you guys are married. So, like, how did how did yeah. that transpire? It got, it got kind of serious in some ways pretty quickly because we were so comfortable with one another and trusted each other um, because we'd been in this would quote unquote work together. Yeah. So we had a lot of trust in each other already, just as who we were. So we went to. Um, I asked her if she'd go with me to this July fourth. Um, lake house um, with a couple of friends of mine whom she had never met oh, right. and and this was like three weeks into us starting dating and she's like yeah sure let's go yeah and we did and we drove through the night I mean it was one of those crazy you know friends trips that you you never forget because it was and I have a picture from we have a picture from that from that yeah. time and yeah. I'm, I look back on it and go like man we we didn't have any idea what was come was in store but we were immediately at ease we traveled well, well together I just delighted by your company. Mm -hmm. It's very sweet. It's true. Yeah. So, but it, it wasn't all smooth sailing. I mean, sure. there were, Matt really had a hard time letting go of the bachelor life. And so he, yeah, he held on to that life a lot longer than he should have while pursuing our relationship. Mm -hmm. And so it caused a lot of problems. And there was a couple of times where I was ready to end things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, and that goes back to what I was saying earlier about my sabotaging. You know, I didn't, there was, I think there were some self-worth issues there where I didn't feel like I was deserving of that kind of love and affection. Mm. Um, and I also feel like uh, I had fallen into some really bad habits as a bachelor, as far as manipulation and being completely honest and forthright and all those things you think you are, but then yeah. you're really Mm -hmm. so I had to work through a lot of issues and she had to be extremely patient with me while that happened and yeah we almost we almost lost our ourselves yeah. a couple of times yeah I really gave a lot of outs when I mean I remember telling him one time that because he would be he would tell me oh I'll call you later and then he'd call me later or let's hang out this weekend and then you know we wouldn't and I mean I was fine with that it wasn't that he, I felt like he was setting me up. I'm just like, if you're going to say those things, then just do them. Because if not, you know, it just, it, it, and so I gave him a lot of outs. Like I, I didn't make him feel pressured to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what helped a lot. I think that's the patience that I gave you. Absolutely agree. And it helped me be accountable to the decisions I was making and how I was treating her. And if that was, right. if that was fair. Yeah. You know, and, and most of the, no, I say a lot of the time it wasn't, mm -hmm. I mean, there had to be some corrective action taken and it was a process for me to break some really bad habits. Yeah. 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 If you're into that person, they're going to hold you accountable. Like, oh, you say you're, we're going to hang out. Then if you really mean it, then do it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Or don't, I mean, but don't say it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we did that for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. I was kind of to the point where I'm like, all right, Matt, we're, I feel like this may not work out. It's just, I mean, he, we were having some trust issues because I didn't know if he was 100% serious. Mm -hmm. Um, cause there had just been a lot of stuff coming down. And finally I was to the point where I was just in things and, um, little did I know he was planning to propose to me. <laughs> <clears throat> we had a we had a very interesting summer <clears throat> of 2010 um, when um, a very close friend of mine um, died. I had to go to Houston for the funeral, and it really gave me some time away to think about what was important and what I would do if. And I knew Bree and I were at a crossroads, and I and the very simple question I asked myself was, okay, well, can you live your life without her? You know, mm. would you be would you ever be happy? if you know that you let this get away, 
And the very simple answer kept coming back. No, I would not be happy if I, if I, I was the cause of the end of this relationship. I could mm. not, could not live with that. And so <clears throat> I went back and we sat down we were talking and she was expecting, I think you were expecting me to say, you know, maybe we should take a break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I tell you what, and Bree was like, okay, here it comes. And I said, why don't we move in together? Oh, right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> so, the first step, so, the okay. first step to serious before the commitment. And this, yeah. and this was in August and, and she said, okay. And she, I can tell she wasn't like all in, but she was like, okay, let's see where this goes. Her dad helped us move in and she said, dad, be sure to hold on to the trailer just in case we need it if I move out. <laughs> Old yet? Well, totally, no. totally not bought in all the way yet. Um, but I was, I was absolutely. But I, I mean, I there was a lot of accountability that still needed to take place. There was still a lot of trust that needed to be built, oh, um, and that didn't stop. You know, when we got engaged a couple of months later, and it didn't stop when we got married. That's something you yeah. you build on all the time. Wow, but that is very profound that you, you know, had the foresight to ask yourself. You know, is this someone you wanted to be with long term? Already, you had that. You know, you you questioned that, and that I guess maybe that was not something you considered with your previous dating life for the for either of you. I was just, I was going to say that you know, that 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 question had never come back with that answer before, and there had been times when I felt like, well. Now you are obligated to take the next step. You've come this far. You've been in, you've been in a relationship this long. That's the logical next step. And I could never take that step. But with Bree, it was very clear to me. The, the, the answer came back resoundingly. I mean, when you ask yourself that question and you explore the idea of a future without someone that you care that deeply about, mm. that's the answer. Yeah. It was for me anyway. <laughs> wow, amazing. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was quite transformative and yeah. Bree had to be very patient. Wow. And so obviously you guys are married and like you both said, it's not without work and, and some, and some struggles. Can you share a little bit about that? How about, how about the kids thing? Yes. Whose idea was that? Cause you both so, said yeah, I, you both did not want to have kids initially. No, that is correct. No. In fact, we had that conversation before we got married about we kids. Had, we had it before we even like, we had that when we were in the formative stages of our relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Cause so. usually when people are dating, they want to know like, oh, is this someone that mm -hmm. wants to have a family? Oh, like you don't want to have kids. I don't want to have kids. Great. Or you already have kids and I'm okay with that. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that you got to get that out of the way out front. Yeah. You know, um, and neither one of us wanted children. Um, neither one of us were, you know, I think dead set on marriage either. I mean, it was not like neither one of us were driving hard. To, well, I to, wanted to get married. I just, yeah, I just but didn't it, want to have kids. Well, let me put it this way. It never seemed to me that Bree was in a big rush. Let me yeah. say it that way. Never in a big rush to get married. Never been like, like she was on the clock, you know, and that was great because that I'm sure would have scared me off. Um, but we didn't, neither one of us wanted to have children. And um, the first couple of years of our marriage were continued to be formative. I mean, it, it, all of them are in way, shape or form, but mm -hmm. we had to get past trust issues. We had um, money is always, is always a big problem a big for couples because yes. everyone thinks about money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's one of the major reasons why people usually get divorced is finances. Yeah. So we went, I love telling this story. We went to um, a, a minister um, that I'd known growing up to do marriage counseling before we got married. He said, I will tell you that 90% of the people who come to me and are concerned about the future of their marriage is one of three things, money, sex, or values. He said, if you line up on those three things, you're good. Yeah. He said, you, you can handle just about anything. Now, it took us a, it took us a while to get aligned up on all three of those things and money was probably the one that was the toughest yeah because we had both had everyone comes comes to the their ideas about money and how it impacts their lives now and how it impacts their futures differently that we're all yeah. formed differently when it comes to that 
So that was, that was, tough. I mean, it, there were some trust issues and then you throw money on top of that. And it's like, well, do I trust you with my income? Do we yeah. pool our money here? Right. What do, how do we have a budget together? That was tough. Do we, are we married filing jointly or married filing separately? I mean, mm -hmm. all of that kind of goes into it. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's trust, but it's also financial trust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was a big one. So yeah, that was a big one. And um, and then I wanted to have kids. It it I know after we get married, I decided I didn't decide it was you like changed your mind. mind. I, I changed but it but it wasn't okay. It's a so woman's it's prerogative. Like, it was like a dimmer switch. Sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. Mm. And then sometimes I did, and then all of a sudden the light was on and it was bright. And I was like, I want to have kids. I don't know. And she came and she came at least slowly about it. She's like, uh, I've been thinking about this and I think I might want to explore that. What I was, I was a I was a tough sell. I will admit that I was a tough sell. I loved our life. I loved the freedom that we had. Mm -hmm. I I really I had to come around to the and idea. And I didn't pressure him. She did again, just like at the beginning of our relationship, she we work it out herself. Then we thought, okay, well let's do it. Let's do it. And then we had a kid. <laughs> She's so awesome. And then we had a second kid. Yeah, Which, you guys have yeah, two. Four, I know, boy and a girl. And little girls four, little boys eight months. Yeah. And it's great. Parenthood is fantastic. We we never thought we would be here. Mm -mm. But being parents is great. It it is. And and so back to working on our marriage. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been easy. Mm -mm. I no. think I think now it's starting after what nine years nine years and then just uh, now it's 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 starting to get a little bit easier i mean yeah. we know how to fight trust each other we trust each other yeah. yeah we don't take each other for granted we don't go to cheap go for cheap shots you know we communicate better that's a big one and i'll be honest man we've been to our our, our more than our fair share of um counseling sessions oh, yeah. marriage counseling huge couples counseling man go it's yeah. the best money you can spend just it really helped us work our things out and communicate better and there's lots of books out there that can help too but sure it, it helped for us to have someone holding us accountable for what we were saying and what we were doing yeah. mm -hmm. and that really helped a lot so yeah we've been working on it yeah mm -hmm. yeah they say you know um things worth fighting for take work you know whether yeah. it's whether it's the career that you want or the relationship that you want, it's all going to take work. Yeah. It's, it's good work. You know, yeah. it's, it's confounding work, sometimes, but it's, it's ultimately very rewarding. Mm -hmm. Certainly has been for us. I, I think we're in a great place, the best we've ever been, ever been. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been good, but yeah, like you said, glow, it's work, you know, yeah. it, it takes some work to maintain, you know, it's like, you don't have the perfect golf swing. You got to keep practicing. Yeah. yeah. You know, you have to talk to your partner have um, to have to if it's something little like you picking your teeth annoys me i mean mm -hmm. it's me telling you that i don't pick anything, it'll drive you crazy yeah i mean that that's true being just absolutely honest and, and giving your partner space to be honest and safe mm -hmm. space to express mm -hmm. themselves that's yeah. the that's the first act of kindness and it starts there yeah Awesome. Well, then, amazing story. What do you guys think of today's dating life? And do you guys have any advice for people who are out there dating? I know it's kind of hard with COVID. I feel I, I don't ever want to go back to the dating scene and me again. Either. And, and I know I shouldn't start lead with that. Um, but it's, it's tough. I feel yeah. But I think that is, I mean, we make it tough. We, we put the pressure on ourselves when we're single. At least I know I did. Mm -hmm. I put a lot of pressure on myself. And then when I finally realized that I didn't need to put that pressure on myself or meet the, this guy that I had in mind, I didn't, I wasn't going to meet that guy and I didn't have to meet that guy. Um, and just being open to relationships and friendships and different things um then that's when when I got relaxed in yeah. dating and that's when I, I mean you also have to know what you want yeah I know I'm just you know, blabbering no no I, not at all I think you make a great point that um 
if you look too hard, you're probably not going to find it. Yeah. You know, you have to be open to meeting people and seeing where that goes. Mm -hmm. And I, somebody asked me, and, and just to, just a quick, I have no idea how I would date during COVID. No clue. No clue. I, I, right. that, I mean, I don't even know where to start with that, but I can tell you that if I were to start dating again, and I really don't want to, if I were ever to start dating again, I would find something that I really enjoyed doing mm -hmm. and was passionate about doing. And I would go there and do that and that find other people, idea. other people that are passionate about that too. Yeah. If I believe in no kill shelter, then I'd go work at Austin Pets a lot. And I would work, I would volunteer there. And ultimately you're going to find someone who values something like you value. Yeah. And with, with our mission work, I mean, we had that in common off the bat. And yeah. I think you have to have a certain heart for that, you know, to, to be in that line of work. Mm -hmm. And you're going in knowing something about that person that matters. Yeah. So that's what I, you know, volunteer, go do something fun, go, go do something meaningful and you'll find other people doing meaningful things too. Mm -hmm. And you're just that much more open to a relationship in, in whatever form that takes friendship or being. Yeah. That's great. I think that's a great message. You guys, both of you. Have, yeah. Great advice. Great suggestions. Well, thank you so much. Any last parting words? I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> I have last parting words. Ooh, your last parting shot. Um, I think that, I mean, communication is the key. Yeah. Um, but if you feel, if you feel it's right and you're patient with it, it's going to come through. I, I, I believe yeah, that. Yeah, don't rush it. Don't, don't rush it. Don't put don't pressure, put pressure yeah, on yourself. Or on the other person. Just be. And know what you want. Yeah. 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 Did. So yeah, there's our parting words. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Well, thank you both for being on this little show and for sharing your story. Um, I'm so excited. My first like couple, both, both sides of the story here. This was a really fun walk down memory lane on Valentine's Day. So thanks for the Valentine's Day present. Yeah, thank you. That's, yeah. that's been wonderful. Uh, so appreciate you guys. All right, audience, thank you for tuning in to this Dating in the Wild story. And thank you guys for being on the show. Until next time. It's a pleasure. Good luck, everybody.